Auschwitz and Bavaria is two kilometers from the former inner German border. The local moated castle is said to be the cradle of the Greenbelt project. Long before the border fell, the conservationists had started from here to register all the flora and fauna which was living on this border strip. And they found out that a lot of endangered species were living there because these species had found an undisturbed biotope there on this almost deserted border area. Shortly after the collapse of communism, an ornithologist from what used to be West Germany proposed making the former border strip a conservation area. Today, Kai Frobel works for the environmental organization Friends of the Earth. Why were you so interested in nature along the border strip? I grew up right on the border. I could see it from my bedroom window. I've always had a feel for nature and a love of bird watching. And if you go to the former border strip, you can see all these rare species. A real treasure trove of biodiversity has developed there. Kai Frobel was a fervent environmentalist even back in the late 1970s. Just a month after the wall fell, he invited like-minded people from East and West Germany to discuss his vision for a green belt. The project soon became a way to help heal the scars left by history. Ramblers can now enjoy the untouched countryside of what was once called the Death Strip. So did the idea of the green belt work? Yes, it did. It's now the largest biotope in Germany. A living, breathing, environmental monument to German reunification. As part of the European Green Belt, the former Iron Curtain is now a fantastic symbol. What used to be a terrible symbol of division is now a symbol of harmony between humans and nature. These days, the Green Belt is also a popular tourist attraction, as are a number of towns situated on what used to be the inner German border. Sonneberg, in the eastern state of Thüringen, is two kilometers away from the former border. It's home to the oldest toy museum in Germany. At the turn of the previous century, it was the center of the German toy industry and even known as the world toy capital. The tradition continued after German reunification. On forbidden trails to the west, these toys became contraband and tourists can still experience these secret paths today. And to make this experience as true to the original as possible, the tours take place at night, so I have to wait until it's dark now. In the 1950s, before the border was fully closed and fortified, smugglers would try to dodge the armed patrols to cross into the west. Gustav Humann is a local and it was his idea to take tourists on tours along the secret paths once used to smuggle contraband. Keeping up with the guide isn't all that easy. So it is known that Western products were quite popular in the East, but why was GDR toys, why were they so popular in the West? Before the border was closed, the trade routes went from Thüringen to Bavaria. The division of Germany put a stop to that, but people tried to maintain these trade routes as long as possible. Smugglers also carried medicine and food from the west into the east because supplies here were scarce. It takes over an hour to cover less than a kilometer on one of the former smugglers' paths. That was a pretty exciting tour through the dark woods here in the direction of the former west. And I have to say, without the help of the dog and of the people here, I really would have lost my way with my bad sense of direction. The armed border guards might be long gone, but you wouldn't really want to hang about here on your own at night, even with a good sense of direction. <laughs> 